Hi, I'm Caleb Rhodes and I'm applying for Sucker Punches Gameplay Engineering Internship for 2016. I am majoring in Computer Science and Math and the programming language that I know best is C++. I also love playing video games so I thought that this internship would be a good fit for me. The first console that I got was a Nintendo Wii back in 2008. And while I still play some games on it, I have recently upgraded to the Nintendo Wii U. I saw in the application for the Gameplay Engineering Internship that you have to include a video. I don't really play combat video games because there aren't a lot available for like Nintendo systems in general. So I thought I'd demonstrate the ones that I play, starting with the one that's most applicable to a job working in computer, like working in designing video games, to be Super Mario Maker. So let me pull that up quick. So if you don't already know, Super Mario Maker is a game that allows you to create your own Super Mario levels, which is why I think it's pretty applicable to video game design, like just coding and designing in general. So you go to you can go to Make, and using just the different items they have on the top of the screen, you can get more too if you push the down button. You can use the stylus to draw on the touchpad on like the touch screen on the gamepad like anything that you want to include in your level. You can like drop down enemies and everything. And then you can choose what style of Mario game you want. Like this one is I believe is on Super Mario Brothers 3, but you can also do Super Mario Brothers and Super Mario World. And the newest one new, new, new Super Mario Brothers U, and you can also choose like the different backgrounds, like this is underground, you can do it above ground, like underwater, castle, you know, like a few other things. So I'm not really going into much detail about how you like go design like a whole level because that would take too long, but I can show you a few levels that I have made on here that I have uploaded to the Nintendo system so other people can play them. I've uploaded six so far and I always like designing these because I always think about like how I can use like the different items that they have in here to like create like a challenging level because the whole point of Super Mario Banker is to make more challenging levels that Nintendo would make themselves like in like their newest Mario release would be like New Super Mario Brothers U. These levels are a lot harder than what you would find in that game. So, um, the first, I guess I could show the first game that, like the first level that I made on here. So I go to WSU, so I thought this would be appropriate. So, let's switch over. So the cool thing about this is you can write things out. So I wrote Go Cougs in this one, then WSU above it. But there's more to the game design than that. Like I have two separate routes you can go. Like you can just keep to mostly the ground and go this way over like the Go Cougs. And then I have a bunch of Goombas over here. And that would be very treacherous if you go like, like it would, it just, it's there to cause the player some problems, but it is possible to beat. And then once you get over Goombas, you have to go through all these moving platforms, and like I can demonstrate how they move to push play here. See, they just move back and forth, and you can position them like however you want. I'm gonna go back to edit mode, and then above us we've got these enemies dropping Goombas and Koopa Troopas and all sorts of things on us. And then these blocks, some of them, when you hit them, items come out, but then there are some more dangerous ones when, when you hit them, enemies come out, which 
if you've never played Super Mario Brothers, like, well, Super Mario Maker before, that would surprise you because typically in Super Mario Brothers, when you hit blocks, enemies don't come out of them, so that's a new thing for Super Mario Maker that I did not expect. And I just have this down here to make it even more difficult. And I have more moving platforms. And then it's just, like, it just goes on and on. I just tried to make this as difficult as possible. But like I said before, it's, it's possible to beat because to upload it, you have to beat it. So I have beat it before. So yeah, then this is the end of the level with the flag. And if we go back, you can see the second route, at least the start of it. Let's just tap that, yeah. So instead of going the way that I showed, you can also go up these moving platforms, but you have to watch out for this spiky thing here because it falls on you, you die. So you can go up here and go through this part, which is a little bit more difficult just because you have to jump higher and that can cause problems. So then you get moving platforms here, you go down and you're back to the original, like the single route, like where the two routes can be converge. So that's basically that one. If you want to play this level and you have access to, a, you need access to a Wii U and Super Mario Maker, but so if you don't have that, you can't exactly play it. But I'm not going to post a whole video of this, like playing this whole level because it takes a while to beat and that takes too long. But I plan to post the course IDs of all six of my courses that I've made in the description to this video. So if you do have access to a Wii U and Super Mario Maker, you can look them up and play them and like see what how how it all works. So another one that I'd like to show, let's see, let's load it. Oh, uh, where is it? Like a more different one that I made would probably be this one here. This is probably the hardest level that I have made, mainly because, like, I'm pretty sure that it's possible to do if you don't know the secret exit, but I made, I put as many enemies in here as possible, and I made, put giant Goombas in here, and lots of boos, and then moving platforms, and thomps, one of the magic Koopas, and moving, like, and then these, like, then I put it in platforms that move on a track. So that was kind of fun to do. And, like, then there's these spike things that move on the track with you. So you have to avoid those. So, yeah, I just made this pretty much as treacherous as I possibly could. Oh, yeah, then I put a big Bowser in here. So if you go if you go through a certain door, you, you can be quite surprised when you get out and Bowser's there. So there's the end of it, but I can show you what I did for anybody who accidentally stumbles upon this and figures out like how to beat this quickly. So what you do is like let's play it. Like I have these invisible blocks right here. You just keep hitting them and jumping up and eventually you get to a green tube or a green pipe or whatever you want to call it. And it puts you up here, get a couple lives, get Yoshi, go back down the tube, and voila, you've beat the, the level. So far I don't think anybody has figured this out, just based on the stats that I can see when I go into Course World on here, but I know I, I, I got this idea from other people who've done this like same thing, so I want to try it out for myself. Just the, you know, the secret exit thing. So that's another element that you can add to these Mario levels that aren't typically in, like, normal Mario levels. Like, the last one that I want to show is one that's pretty different from other Mario levels you might have seen. Like, I made a maze. Like, basically what I did is I filled this whole thing in with blocks, and then I used the erase thing, which is right here, to erase blocks to, like, create paths, but 
it wasn't as easy as I thought it would because you have to draw the path so that Mario can actually jump and like doesn't get stuck in one of them because like the limit is like let's see it must be six blocks so that's what this is but if it's taller than six blocks Mario can't jump all the way so then whoever's playing your level can't access that part of the maze which is bad obviously because then you don't have a good maze and I just added a few things just for the look of it like some stars piranha plants just because I figured I might as well add some like Mario elements to it and then the whole goal is to find the secret door there's a few of them that puts you out let's see right here because then you can go through this path and get to the top of the flag. Now I'm not going to show you exactly how you do that besides the fact that it has to be the other door with a spade but of course you can't see that when you're actually playing the game. But yeah I'm not going to tell you how to do it just in case you do decide to go play these levels. So you have to experience it. You know, like experience the challenge. And oh yeah, the one last thing I did to make this a little bit more challenging was I changed the time to 60 seconds. So you can't just spend a lot of time just, you know, wandering around trying to find where the exit is. You have to do it within a split within 60 seconds or else you you lose a life. So that's pretty much Mario Maker. And again, like I said before, like I like this game because it allows me to kind of see how um, just creating video games works and I think that's kind of the purpose of this really like when Nintendo released it that's what they were kind of saying so if I did get this internship I kind of would have a little bit of experience just in the design aspect of like video games even though of course it wouldn't be like designing Mario games but kind of have, I still kind of have a little bit of practice like, you know, designing video games. So, yeah, I just like the thought process behind it and the creativity. I mean, I didn't actually code this myself, obviously, but I designed the level, so that, that should count for something. So, the next game that, that I want to show, like, there's three games I, I'm going to show, but the next game I want to show is... Super Smash Brothers, which is as close to a combat game as I have on the Wii U. So I'll show you one round of that just to show like what it is. Like it's not a first person shooter or anything, it's like a, it's like more like a 2D game. So let me put that in. Loads. It takes a minute for it to read the disc. Here we go. There's the title screen. Very exciting. Shooting the intro should pop up. We can skip to the menu. Right, here we go. So we don't need. To, okay. So here's the menu, and I will do one round just to show, like, what exactly this is. So the basic part is just go smash, and you could do eight player smash, but don't need to do that. So let's pick a character. My go-to character is always Yoshi. This is my favorite Nintendo character, and I set these as CPUs, or else I'd be playing by myself, which wouldn't really work. Yeah, I have it set to two minutes, which is the lowest time, I think. No, wait, one minute is. Okay, so I'll set it to one minute to keep this video somewhat on the short side, hopefully. So let's start. Then I'll go to the big battlefield, because that's pretty basic, and just to show like what exactly this game is. So the goal of this game is 
is to knock out the other players. Like, they get an infinite number of lives unless you change that setting. But you want to be the person with the most number of knockouts and the least number of deaths by the end of the time period. And you can knock out a player as soon as they reach 100%. You can see that on the bottom of the screen. Not exactly an expert at this one yet. I just got it a few months ago, but I'm giving it my best try here. So hopefully, things will turn out well. So all the rest of these are CPU. Doesn't look like I won. CPU Zelda won. But it gets second, so that's not too bad. So that's what Super Smash Brothers is. And as you can see, it is a combat game because you're trying to be everybody else and fight with everybody to so come out on top. Um, yeah, like I said, like I haven't played any first person shooters really, so this is the only one like the only kind of combat game that I played. So the last game that I want to play is Mario Kart 8. It's the one that I play the most because it's my favorite game. So let's put that in. So I had Mario Kart Wii on the old Wii, and I mastered that, I was an expert. And since I've gotten Mario Kart 8, I've become an expert at that too, because I like to compete online and with friends. And, you know, I'm a pretty competitive person, so this is a good game. And so, yeah, I'll demonstrate what it does in case you haven't seen it before. So let's go single player versus... And then my go-to Mario character is always Yoshi. And then what was new in this game is you get to pick like your car combination, but I always go with the gold standard with gold tires, gold glider after, ever since I unlocked those, which was actually quite a bit of work to unlock those, but I won't go into detail about that. Oh yeah, then there's also stats that will, like I'll discuss that later. Um, so no teams, I always put it on 150. And then hard calm, all vehicles. I'll get it, do it. I'm gonna have it choose this time. I'll do three races. I would do two, but it doesn't let you do that. So here we go. So I'm gonna show three of my favorite tracks and kind of explain why they're my favorite tracks. So the first one, where is it? Oh yeah, it's Yoshi Valley from the N64 version of Mario Kart. So I like this one because it takes more thinking than a normal Mario Kart track just because you have to figure out the most efficient way through the canyon as you will soon see. So here we go on this. I have it on tilt controls because Mario Kart Wii was tilt controls and that's just what I'm used to so I like that. I think tilt controls are a little probably before their time because most people don't use them, but nice. Here's the bridge of death. That's what my friends call it. I go through the canyon. It's the most efficient routes. It took me quite a few tries to figure this out. Piranha plant can eat everything in front of it, which is quite convenient actually, because it eats your competitors. Doesn't last for too long though. 
if someone hit the egg. Well, don't try to rear-end me when I have a shell behind me. Bad idea. Now that I'm in first place, I have to worry about the blue shell. You might be able to see what that is, because it will probably come along. It only targets first place. There's only one way to get rid of it, the horn item that hasn't came up yet. But you don't necessarily have that when the blue shell comes along. You only have it if you're, if you're actually lucky. So, let's see what happens. No lightning. But everybody gets hit by the lightning, it's not a huge deal. Yeah, and so there's always three laps on each Mario level, like each like track. But I always go the shortest route every time because you know that's I mean it saves you time overall and the CPUs never do, which is why it's better to play against real people because they're smart enough to figure out the best routes, whereas the CPU just kinda go like any old route. So if I was programming this game, I think like when you select the CPU to be hard, I think I'd have at least half of them go the most efficient route just to make it more challenging because then you couldn't pull away from the pack like I have done and this. Like if you could see the map, you could see how far ahead I am. So that would be one of the changes that I made to Mario Kart because I know in the application it says that like you should think about like what kind of changes you would make in the games that you play. And that would definitely be one of them. Just make the CPUs smarter. So the CPUs do use some of the shortcuts, but they don't necessarily use them in a very like smart way. So the second one I want to do is uh, Mount Wario. So it's a pretty, like I, said, I want to say, like unique Mario Kart track because there's a couple like it, but like it doesn't have laps it just has three checkpoints well two checkpoints really so when it's new for the Wii U it's not a what the so-called retro track from a previous Mario Kart release so let's go on this one you start in front because I finished in front the last time Oh, I messed up there. Well, catch up later. Makes it more challenging in the long run, I guess, if you mess up early, because then you have to catch up, which is okay. You can practice more that way. Baby Rose Alina, except she had a banana, so that didn't do anything. So the banana stops the red shell from hurting you. Which is good when you have a banana, but not good when the person you're trying to red shell has a banana. It doesn't help your case. What I like about this track is it has like all different terrain. Like you saw at the start, we were like up in the mountains and there's lots of ice, and you go through the forest, and then you go through like some like downhill skiing, and then here's like the ski jump part. Go through these loops. And you can see the finish line down there.
So there's that one. And the last one to finish this pack of three would be Warrior's Gold Mine, which is part of the DLCs. Where is it? Here it is. And it's an uh, old Wii track, so it was my second favorite track on Mario Kart Wii. My favorite track on Mario Kart Wii was Rainbow Road, because I mastered that track. It was a lot of fun, but they haven't added that one for a DLC in Mario Kart 8, although I hope they will. But, but I was happy they had they added my second favorite one. So I like it because it's challenging, and well, at least it was challenging back in the day, but... Like, it doesn't have a lot of rails, so it's really easy to fall off, and it's easy to shove people off, too, which is fun.